Howdy, y'all, and welcome to the Years Podcast, produced by Terrier TV. It is a beautiful Friday in Florida. How's it going, Bill? Hey, it's going great. It's going great. Um, yeah, man, it's uh, it's been a weird day all, overall. I know you said it's been a it's been a it's a, been a weird week. Been I a mean, trying with, week within the fifties, you know, and everybody's trying to all the kids trying to figure out what they're gonna wear. Where because it's well, cold. To, yeah, because it's cold. Yeah. So it's cold. What did Andy Murray say that time? It was hand solo season. Yeah, yeah, we're we're getting close to it. We're not there yet, but yeah, hand solo season. We're all the girls dressed like hand solo. <laughs> it just that was, that still rings uh, very true. In yeah, my mind. it's very true. It's it hysterical. Is. I never. I was just. It. I used to just call it boot season. That's it's when all the boots, any boots that they own, yep. they come out. That's rather hilarious. All right, so let me inter- introduce our guest. Let's before do it. We jump yep, into this before we go into. Uh, so today on the podcast, we are joined by Karsten Peterson uh, from the. The Space Coast Exec- Executive Jet Center. I knew if I said it too fast, I was going to fumble it. So I was trying to slow it down a little bit. Thanks for being here, you buddy. You bobbled it. You Did I bobble it? You bobbled it. You didn't fumble it. You fumbled, kept possession, but you bobbled. It's I never heard the term here. bobble it. Oh, you, you do football all the time. You never heard bobble? <laughs> I've never heard bobble. The bobble the ball? Never heard bobble. Oh, thank, thank you, Carson, for being here, buddy. No, thanks for having me. He's heard bobble. He <laughs> oh, yeah. Have you heard See, bobble? there you go. It's I coach football. I never heard the term And you bobble. never heard the word bobble. Yeah, we finished. I we think finished. you have. I think you're just putting up a bo- No, a I'm not putting up a, a bubble over the bobble. You know, I'm right. literally, okay. I don't think I've actually ever heard of it. Let's start, let's <laughs> talk semantics. Here we go. <laughs> um, yeah, so we finished out our season yesterday. We had our last game of the season uh, up in St. Augustine. Okay. Against the... Florida School for the Deaf and the Blind. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that was a it was an awesome game. Did you know that Ray Charles went there? Did he really? Yep. Yep, he went to the in St. Augustine School for the Deaf and the Florida School for the Deaf and the Blind. He's from Florida. Didn't know that either. Yeah. It's an absolutely beautiful place. I mean, mm-hmm. I, have you ever been up there? I have No, I've been by it. I've never yeah, it's never a, gone and seen the campus. It's humongous. Oh, it is. It, it is, is humongous. Yeah. Uh, beautiful campus, but yeah, we uh finished up the season with a win. We ended up winning uh, 46 oh, to 6. Well, you were worried you weren't going to have enough players because the illness had gone through your it ranks. It did. Yeah, we had 15 kids that got knocked down to five kids on practice on Thursday. Because uh-huh. I think what flu B and uh, the stomach flu and everything else ran through the team. Oh, okay. And uh, yeah, we ended up. But when it came game time, they were. We had 12 kids and it worked out. So okay. yeah, we had to. I had to have a couple of the 10th grade varsity kids come and at least stand on the sideline in case somebody, you know. Right, just in case. Yeah, somebody fell out or something. But, yeah, it was, a, it was good times. So they always ask, like, Coach, did you talk about us on the podcast? Like, listen uh-huh. to the podcast sometimes. Find yeah, out. listen yeah. to the podcast. So, yes, I've talked about you guys so on now, the podcast. And now if you listen to the podcast, <laughs> he will have told you that he talked about you on the podcast. Exactly. It just happened. It just happened. Oh, Absolutely. Lord. Yeah, good times. Um, and I am, what well, I'm, I'm heading out of country tomorrow morning. Are you? Okay. Yep. So, yeah, I fly out to Belize uh, first thing tomorrow morning. Orlando, Miami, Belize. I was kind of out of country over the last weekend. Yes. Bill, I, I went to West Virginia. Bill <laughs> took a trip to West Virginia for something I didn't know West Virginia was even known for. You have an idea what that might be? It, it, no. threw, me, it threw me a curveball I'd never okay. expected. West Virginia, in that area of the country, is known for um, a couple of things food-wise. But one is um, hot dogs, chili dogs. Chili dogs is is a big... And the other thing that you probably have never heard of that is the pepperoni roll. I would think that was a New York thing or something. Those two things. No, New York is more bagels, but the pepperoni Mm -hmm. roll was a thing that they... And hot dogs, too, the same thing. Um, It's poor people food, you know? A A hot dog, and you look for a way to dress it. Chicago... The Chicago dog is is world famous, but in West Virginia, it's you know mustard and onions and chili sauce, and if you're really gung ho about it, you put coleslaw on top of it. Hmm. And and I'm not gung ho. I'm kind of a wimp. I just have chili on it. Are you allowed to put ketchup on your hot dogs? And it's Virginia? not. We're not like Chicago. You won't get That's kicked a, out. That's a I whole did, different story. I did go to a place. And we got chili dogs, and the guy sitting at the table next to us had ketchup on his. That's what he got. Interesting. And uh, and nobody uh, looked down. Nobody drug him out and like no. kicked him to the curb. No, nobody in did. Chicago, that. Chicago, so, they will. Yeah, in certain places it's in bizarre. Chicago, they it's will. bizarre. Yes, it's not. It's not universal. All they are over not Chicago. friendly with uh, with ketchup on hot dogs. Because Frank likes ketchup on his hot dog. No, yeah. I just want the opportunity to be able to sure. choose if I want it well, on there. Well, in Chicago, all the stuff that they put on there, you know, the, the yeah. tomatoes and the, the 
the pickles and all that stuff. It's it's so odd to me. It is. I mean, because it's you know, it is. It's it's a bit much. But yeah, that's what we did. My brothers and I, we we took a road trip. We went to West Virginia. Now my my parents are from West Virginia. My grandparents were there all their lives, and we used to spend the summers there. Mm. So we have a lot of good memories about that. And we wanted to go back during the fall, you know, in October, try to see some leaves. And we did. It was some beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, it's flipping up there, I'm yeah. sure. Oh, yeah. Was, yeah. It, was it cold? It had, uh, first day we were there, the high was 76. Okay. Clear blue skies, beautiful. And then the next day it turned. Uh, the high the next day was um, in the 50s. Okay. I figured it was flipping up there pretty quick. So, yeah. Yeah, so we went up there. We had some chili dogs. We saw some sights. Um, yeah, it was a good time. I'm well, glad to hear it, time. buddy. Yeah. I'm glad to hear it. That sounds like quite the... Yeah, it's a, that's a different trip. I've heard about people making the, the whiskey trip, you know, the bourbon trip right. up in, the, in Kentucky and stuff, but I never heard about the, the hot dog trip. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Just, now, it's not the only the time thing. I've done it. My, my daughter Natalie and I were on a road trip out west, and we were in Colorado Springs. And uh, it was the end of our trip. You know, we were going to go home. And I said to her, I said, Natalie, you want to get some chili dogs? <laughs> she said, yeah. I said, okay, we're going. And we drove straight to Weston, West Virginia, got a dozen chili dogs, and Holy then went home. Holy That's a hike. Yeah, yeah, but it was fun. It was fun. Yeah, that's where it's, it's at. Just, and it's just something that you can say that you did. You know, I drove from Colorado Springs to West Virginia. And She'll we, never forget that either. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We did it just to get some chili dogs. That's special. Mm. Yeah, yeah that's special. it was fun. It was fun. All right. You ready to jump into this? Yeah, let's do it. All right, Karsten. So tell us a little bit about your journey. You know, so you, you wrote me and Bill a bio telling us a little bit about your background and how you became, you went from uh, the place where you grew up over here in this area and then uh, started this business. So kind of walk us through that real quick. Tell us your, tell us your story. Yeah, so, uh, well, I, I spent... Uh, in Denmark, we, we get drafted in the military, so I got drafted, and I thought, this is good fun. Spent uh, some time in the Danish Air Force. After 21 years, I thought, I got to grow up at some point and get a job. So uh, uh, I was sitting... Now, um, uh, hold on. I, I, mm-hmm. Sorry to interrupt you, but I was talking to one of my students today. We were talking about the military, and now, do you guys get to retire at 20 years? Do you get at 20 years? Uh, no. Uh, no, Denmark's a totally different system. You, okay. you retire when you're 60. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So, do you have any military benefits still, or is I, I do. Yeah. Okay. I do. Okay. Yeah. But but in Denmark. In Denmark. Not oh, in okay. You can't. Not have, in Florida. It doesn't no. travel with you. No. No. Oh, okay. No. But okay. it's it's I, I you know I knew that it was uh, okay. But um, I was sitting in uh, Italy. I was on a deployed position and uh, uh, got in contact with an American uh, company, and uh, they were starting up the same thing that I was doing in the for the military. They were starting that up kind of like civilian. It was uh, intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance, flights, uh, basically situational awareness, flying over, see what's going on uh, with an aircraft where you can see bigger areas. Uh, so I said, yeah, sure. You know, I'll, uh, I phoned up my command and said, hey, can I leave for a year or something? He's like, yeah, sure. So I left for three years on a trial, oh, joined okay. this company, uh, American company, uh, thought, they were based in Florida. I thought, yes, I'm, I'm going to Florida. This is going to be great. Well, they sent me over to ex-Yugoslavia, and I spent seven, eight years over there uh, running this operation, which was very, very gratifying, very, very interesting uh, stuff. So I kind of got Americanized over there by working with all these American guys, pilots, uh, uh, operators, mechanics, and all that kind of stuff there. Okay. Um, when that whole adventure stopped, the company... Uh, very kind said hey come on over to the states we'll uh, we'll uh, find you a job or do you want to come over here and we, we got jobs for you so uh, came over here did some business development ties with Florida uh, I, I should say while I was overseas working for the company I met my my wife uh, Wendy she is from uh, she's from Ohio but but lived in, in Florida for the longest time so uh, we moved back here and uh, I've been in Titusville ever since 2000 10 2011 at what point did you guys start up the business we started the business up in uh 2020 okay so uh so work, working for this company i i kind of ran that part of the business that we took over uh for a couple of years and and my boss 
they were like, this time we stop, and uh, do you want to take over something? So I took over that FBO part of it, and, and I will get into that. Um, and there were some aircraft involved. They went to some other people, and but so I took over basically the current job, that I, the job that I had at that time. Okay. Um, which was a, a hard decision because there, it was COVID time, and, and when I moved to Florida, that was when the shuttle program kind of stopped. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and Titusville, you know, I we were in a flux. Yeah, we were. In a we big, were. Yeah. We were in a yeah. big flux here. Hopefully, um, you bought a house then. I, I did. Yeah. Good. good and good for I, you. you know what? Uh, being <laughs> yeah. a good Dane, I am. I felt sorry for the guys I bought the house from, uh, but the market. It, it oh was, yeah. It was just. Yeah, it was non-existent. Very, very, it, that was yeah, the right. time to get. If you're buying, that yeah. was the time to do yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Half the houses in the county were open to to be bought. Oh yeah. 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 Everybody was bailing out. Yeah. So, but so, but it's been so it's been interesting. So I've been seeing this uh, influx of of businesses coming to Titusville, uh, kind of from the beginning, kind of like the new era. It's kind of interesting to grow up with, uh, not to grow up. I am grown up, but to follow that right the oh, development yeah. here yeah. in the local area, see how it, we deal with it, and especially since you're in the business realm. So you see that, and, and with the privatization of space coming and all those different companies coming, yeah. and the airport, there's all kinds of things happening out at the airport. There's all kinds of stuff happening. Uh, yeah, one is. of my first openings was, you'll remember, we see the, uh, uh, the movies like, hey, I was from the time where we shook hands with Frank Sinatra. Well, I shook hands with Elon Musk. I can tell that, there that you go. years yeah. down the road. When he first started coming to the area, he, he actually flew into to Titusville, and... Uh, yeah, Elon Musk, SpaceX, very interesting, but but I don't know that I really knew how big it was going to be at that oh, time, yeah. but we kind of knew that it would... It I don't would, think um, anybody knew how... No, probably not. I listened to his stuff, and I was like, there's no way he's going to be able yeah. to do that. They, yeah. he, can't, he can't land the first stage back right. there, and they do it now all yep. the time. Yep. It's amazing. Yeah, it's and amazing. doing it for what, a 20th of what a oh, shuttle yeah, cost yeah. is yeah. not well, less than they that? Because they keep reusing them. And sending them back up, and it's and and so much so that NASA lets them put people on top of the used ones now. Yeah, yep. and uh, th that's how it's amazing what, yep. th what he has done. Yeah, it is. Uh, and I also uh, having these guys come to our facility, uh, I, I I saw the people that was working for SpaceX. These were very very young because I saw the NASA part of it too. They deal, do some dealings with them as well, but. Those privatized uh, uh, space industry people, they're very, very young, very, very eager. I do remember, a funny thing, I was sitting out there, airplane comes in, everybody uh, leaves. Um, two hours later, it's around midnight, and the kids are still sitting around the FBO, and I kind of thought, <laughs> well, they, they're, you know, they're probably waiting on something, and, and so I waited. Uh, I was on the job. We had closed several hours ago. So I asked one of them, and said, when, when are you guys leaving? He was like... Uh, what do you mean? We were just, uh, I said, well, are you going to stay here the whole night or? No, 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 we got hotels. We're just, we're just finishing up some stuff. I was like, well, can you do that at the hotel? <laughs> <laughs> Time was not a business for them. Right. It was midnight. Right. It really didn't matter. They were working on and something. They, just, yeah. they could do it at the hotel, or, but they just sat there and do it. Whereas, they got into a groove. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where, where us normal people would probably say, all right. That's right. It's time to go. It's time to go. Let's let's <laughs> let's pack <laughs> it in tomorrow. Yeah. Yep, but uh, so in. yeah. So it's interesting to see um, that 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 kind of stuff out there. Um, the the FBO itself, it, it's it's we cater to to incoming aircraft uh, that coming into Titusville. Any any airplanes, small airplanes, uh, people flying around the weekends to, uh, just to have fun. Um, uh, charter business coming in um, space. Innovators, uh, movers, you know, big, the big guys coming in. Oh, yeah. Uh, we got military aircraft coming in with satellites. Uh, it, it's very interesting. So we service the airplanes. We help the crew out with the passengers, concierge services, uh, things like that. I got a question for mm -hmm. you. I live on the north end of town, um, you know, on the end of Dunn, you know, yeah. the, the, air, the airplane airport there. And, it, and there's a group of pilots out of there that every saturday morning they fly out and they always they go have breakfast someplace yeah and uh is there still a restaurant at the no the no it's one of our dreams to open 
something again. Okay. It's been closed for a couple of years, but there used to be a restaurant, very popular restaurant. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I used to, yeah, I ate there a couple yeah. of times. And then a, a lot of people would fly in, you know, like these guys, they fly someplace, yeah. they have breakfast there. And then, so about seven o'clock, they're all taken off. Yeah. And about 10 o'clock, they're all coming back. Yep. And you wonder, where'd they go? Where'd they, they go? That's hmm. what they called, at that time, they called it the $100 cheeseburger. Right? Because they yeah. would fly out somewhere, <laughs> and at the end, before they bought yeah. the cheeseburger, they spent 100 bucks. <laughs> yeah. Now it's probably $500 oh, cheeseburger. Oh, probably, yeah. 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 yeah but fuel. it's a good way to get yeah. out, get yeah. the plane out. And, yeah. And, yeah. A lot of them, it's, it's, it's we think, oh, it's just to get in the plane and go somewhere and... But they challenge themselves all the time. They do, eh, well, let's see if I can uh, fly over there and then fly over there. And let's see with this wind today if I can do. I can hear them because they have conversations in the FBO right. okay. where they talk, hey, have you ever tried to uh, uh, do this approach over there? And, uh, oh, there's this guy in the tower. He's horrible. And, but, you know, <laughs> it, it, it's a whole. Oh, yeah. It's a whole. There's vegan. a whole culture there. Yeah, there is. There's a there whole is. culture and, and a, like a society. Yeah. They know each other oh, yeah. and they look out for each other. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a cool. Now, Arthur Dunn, uh, that's a lot of um, experimental uh, yeah. stuff going on over there. So that's a whole group of people who help, they help each other out. They fix their, their airplanes. Uh, they build airplanes over there, I believe. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of interesting things uh, happening yeah. there. And they skydive too. There's a lot yeah, of they do, yeah. going on yeah. there too. Yeah. yeah. Now that you run an FBO, has it, cha- has it changed your thought process when you travel? Do you see things differently? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I, I do. Tell I, me about uh, some of that. Well, so um, so we see all kinds of people coming in. We see the people that fly to an FBO to hang out, to come in for a launch. A lot of people fly in for a launch, you oh, know. Oh, yeah. So they will fly in. They'll spend two or three hours with us. Then there's the other people that comes in that we're basically just get out of the way. We got to move on. And it, it's a trick to find out who, who wants to chit-chat and who wants to just move on. But um, I, I do realize that when, when we go in to an airplane or an airport, uh, these people that we deal with, they've been doing this the whole day. They're probably on the fifth or the sixth hour now, you know, and you come with your special demands. You want to do this, you want to do this. <laughs> I, I kind of realize that part of it, that uh, if, if I do get the cold shoulder, I understand it. Uh, yeah. You know, my, yeah. my approach would probably be a little bit different instead of, hey, uh, I bought this ticket. I'm entitled to this. I'll probably say, "Hey, is it possible to?" Because, right. you know, there's a lot of you're dealing with human beings, sure. and, and we're all different. And and we, be, from the school, I'm sure you see it. I mean, I even think we become even more different as time goes by. Uh, oh, we yeah. have so many special needs, different needs. Yeah, um, and everybody has a different experience. Yeah. Everybody comes at it from a different direction. Yeah. And yeah, you got to kind of get set in your ways and you got to every, yeah. everybody going, getting set in their ways, going different directions, getting set in their ways too. Yeah. Right. Right. Kind of just, that's kind of the flavor our country is in right now. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. You're yeah. right. You can choose to approach that with kindness or you can choose to approach that some other way. Yeah. It's uh yeah, you're, you, you preach. Yeah, no doubt. You're, you're saying, you're saying it all. So we've mentioned the term FBO. Explain to us what FBO is and what, uh, what, you kind of went through it a little bit, but what the responsibilities are of an FBO at an airport? So uh, it's it's a fixed base operator. That's what it's called. And I, I'm thinking I I thought I had it as one of the um, I wanted a trivia. <laughs> Ooh, no, but I no, guy. but I, but I caught it because I I thought no, nah, they no nobody knows about an FBO. <laughs> so, so you would ba- be right. Back in the day after World War One, World War yeah, World War One. The airplanes that were flying around were being barnstormers, right? It was out in the countryside, and uh, World War, uh, yeah, World War One. They had airplanes. There was really no regulations or anything. They just flew around, and they got some fuel here and there. And uh, later on, World War Two, uh, FAA started to go in and, and do some regulations. And and I, I think it was around that time they created this FBO business because now you start carrying people, passengers, th- th- there are some rules, regulations that we have to follow. You can't just put fuel on an airplane. You have to know a little bit about the airplane capacity, the fuel, and things like that. So um, okay. so, so, fixed base operator is basically at any any airport, there, there, there will be an FBO. There could be two, three, there could be five at some of the big airports. Uh, international airports, they got the terminals. 
they do all the airline stuff. There's freight terminals, and then there's the FBOs that deal with all the private uh, airplanes, the corporate airplanes, and things like that. Okay. Um, I uh, never knew that. Yeah, yeah. we are. Yeah. Um, th- there's a quality program that FBOs should follow. Uh, we have it at our place. We have a, a uh, our fuel provider basically trains us uh, to ensure that. Uh, you won't believe what could go wrong when when you're dealing with with like a lot of fuel amounts. Um, it can be catastrophic it. very easily. Well, you're, sure. you're dealing with some of these airplanes. I mean, they 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 cost like eighty million dollars. Uh, we park them. The, the FBO. We we when they come in, we park them. We line them up. Sometimes it's easy. There's one or two airplanes on the ramp. Sometimes there's six, seven, eight, fifteen airplanes on the ramp. Oh yeah, we get a manned launch. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. you got uh, big airplanes where they sit very high. You got small airplanes with propellers. They all start up at the same time. Nobody hears anything. Nobody sees anything. So so the guys working there, they they gotta be they gotta be qualified. And that's what you have with with the FBOs is you have a um, um, certified people who who's dealing with these uh, with these jets. When you started this business, what are some of the major things that you didn't expect? Uh, when you first started, that you've learned over time, like some things that maybe caught you off guard, you weren't expecting. Um, never really dealing with fueling airplanes. I was like, man, they make they design these very very high proficient airplanes and all that kind of stuff, and it it is like they put it they put it all together, nice cockpits, nice cabins, and then somebody says. Wait a minute, we got to put fuel in it. <laughs> oh, shit. Where do we do that? And they put those fueling points. Which is find the, the most inconvenient places. place we it can It's very it. inconvenient. <laughs> and we'll just stick it there. Yeah. Uh, uh, we, we, have, we have some are easy. Uh, the, the, I'm talking most about the, mostly the, the big airplanes. Right. Uh, the small airplanes are easy. It's over the wing. But some of them, uh, they have wing fuelings, and, and we we got to climb up on the wing. And some aircraft owners, they're like, oh, don't touch the wing. You can't climb on the wing. And I was like... I had no idea this was going to be so hard. Um, <laughs> wow. It, that's ex- yeah. Um, okay, that's, that's unique. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah things yeah. you don't think about. I didn't think about it. I thought it was because uh, it's a safety thing, right? It, 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 I actually, we've got to be careful what I say, but, it, but <laughs> we probably, there's probably a lot of regulations being broken on a ramp uh, simply mm-hmm. because the way you have to operate, you can't. Uh, we, we have had inspectors from FAA, we've had inspectors from, from the big shell companies, the big oil companies come out and say, oh, yeah, you can't do that, you can't do that. Where's the, where's the ladder that, that gets you up on the truck and all that? And we're like, we can't operate like that. And the big guys, they're like, oh, okay, well, let's move on. We'll, uh, we'll move on to something different. So, so there's a lot of, um, I'm lucky, I have guys who knows what they're doing and, and I don't have to worry about them when they're out there but but it is scary sometimes it is scary when they go up there some heavy stuff yet that you have to lift on a ladder how can you how can you lift a big hose and a connector on a ladder and at the same time have three point connection with the ladder you know <laughs> oh, you're not yeah. allowed to hold this hose in one hand you gotta right. use two hands so how do you get up there it, oh, yeah. that's those tough. things that they, they, they were interesting that they, they was kind of new to me uh, the other stuff was uh, you, you park airplanes you airplanes don't just move as easy. You can't just like move them two centimeters. So you got to calculate a little bit with the wingspan and, and stuff like that. That was a, that was a, a learning thing for me. Let's say I, I found out, you know, just going there and visiting you guys, you're right. There's some days you go out there, there's these monster jets and other days it's, it's right. little planes mixed in with the monster jets. And I mean, you see these giant like military cargo planes out there sometimes and you're, it's the, it's like comparing yeah, your backyard shed to the Empire State Building. It, the, uh-huh. it, every day you see something different when you drive by there. Yeah. Never know what to expect. It's it's crazy. So yeah, yeah I can see how it's. Uh, you guys are like the Swiss Army knife of uh, uh, of airports over there. You got you got so many different things going on. Yeah, we uh, one of the things that I like is is that because of of our guys, uh, mostly guys, a couple of girls we have, but they're so good at it that we kind of become a resource center because there's a lot of there's a lot of resources needed when you're dealing with, with, with airplanes and, and people who flies them and, and uh, travel plans that didn't work out. Hey, we've got to change uh, things. Um, and your knowledge base is just going to be growing all the time with this you stuff have, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah, your knowledge base, your, your, the people you know, the, the, 
the local people who can help out with 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 different things it's um, it's very interesting um, yeah well speaking of helping out i want to make sure i tell you and your wife thank you so much for always supporting us uh for two years in a row now they're a big reason why our ears to the environment eco fest has went off oh okay is, is uh is you and wendy and i really really appreciate that and yeah, if, I, if i haven't said thank you i I mean, no, it. You, thank you, you a bunch. But yeah, th- yeah, you're very welcome. We enjoy doing that. Yeah, it's uh, it's such a such a unique topic. It's oh yeah. Another, that's one of the reasons me and Bill love doing this stuff because we always have guests on that everybody has a different knowledge base, right? And it's it's cool to talk about, to people about things that you have no idea about. Sure. Yeah. I know yeah. so little about planes and the aircraft world in general, and just it's it brings brings a whole new set of things to life. Oh yeah. 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 It's cool. Yeah, pretty neat. So I gave you a little bit of homework. You want to jump into it? Sure. All right. Sure. What is uh, what is our topic for? So uh, so the first one. Well, now I know I have an Arthur Dunn neighbor. I I was. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Okay. <laughs> what was the first airport in the Titusville Titusville airport? Airport. There's two. And when was it created? There were two airports. Well, I mean, one would be Arthur Dunn. One right? would be Arthur Dunn. Yeah. Was that the first one? That was the first one. Okay. When it. when did they? When was it? Uh, that would have been the '60s, I would guess. When Titusville was first taken off. Well, early '60s. Yeah, mid '60s. Like, uh, I'm going for '58. Really? I'm going to say '62. Yep. I would have to say we're way off, and and I was too. 1927. Whoa. Okay, so he's been around a while. It wow. was a it was an emergency emergency landing strip for U.S. mail. Oh, okay. How interesting. Man, I heard somebody tell me that one time. I want, I want to say that was an Uncle Bill thing. Maybe Uncle Bill or my dad told me that. Okay. Yeah, I, I just recently heard that. I, I remember. That wasn't you that told me that? No, sir. No, okay. I did not know that. All right. Somebody told me that, that it was a, it, my, it might have been my buddy Wayne who lives up there. He lives okay. right beside the airport. Told me that it was, uh, yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah, I, th- I thought so. Titusville Airport would be, it's not a question, but it, 1943. And it was uh, built for uh, World War II assets. But and that's now Tyco? Yeah. But an interesting thing is <laughs> in 1956, they had a NASCAR Grand National race. That's where the, <laughs> that's where the NASCAR race was at. Yes. That was one of our, that was one of our trivia questions early <laughs> oh, on, that okay. we had a NASCAR race in Titusville. But I've never talked to anybody that knew where it happened at. It happened at, it happened at Tyco. Yep. Really? Yeah, well, Mind you know, boggling. you know, the Daytona 500, they used to do it on the beach. Right, yeah. And the last winner on the beach was a guy by the name of Pete Payne, who was from Coco. Interesting. And, and he ran a, uh, a restaurant supply company in his later years. And that that's was when the, the average guy could actually run a car and be able to Yeah, that's it. where I yeah. met him. And it was amazing because he's the last winner huh. of the Daytona on the beach. Any idea if there's any pictures of that from uh, from Tyco back in the day anywhere? I would have to. There's got to be. Oh, there's got to be. It was fifty six. I've, I've looked. Yeah. I've looked them up. I, ha- okay. I cannot find any pictures of it anywhere. I yeah. actually, uh, I have a neighbor who is uh, who has been into a drag racing and all that stuff. I I'm pretty sure he that may be, even be a he may even be a candidate here. He's done a lot of uh, uh, interesting things. I'm, I I'll okay. check with him. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. See yeah, if he's got some means. pictures from it. That, that would be interesting. Well, those are two good back-to-back questions. Yes, that, that, yes, that was very awesome. Good. Yeah, good job. Um, okay, so a lot of people are flying. What percentage of the world's population has never been on an airplane? Do we think percentage? Oh, never been percentage of the world's of the world. Yeah, of the world. So yeah, that's probably so pretty that high. Higher. Yeah, it's probably higher than you would think. Although you know what, a lot of people can't afford to plot, fly. Do, yeah. and a lot of countries don't have the no, availability but a lot to fly. of countries. A lot of countries they fly you around. I mean, it's. Well, you look at like in India, how many airplanes go in, in stay in the country and they're they're national airlines and it can't be that expensive. Well, I know people that are well off that still don't fly. Right. That have never flown. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna say fifty percent. I'm gonna go with a crazy number like fifty percent. Fifty percent? Yeah. I'm gonna say the world's population. The world's population. If I'm saying America, I'd say obviously something a lot less. I'm gonna say forty percent of the world's population has not flown. We're actually talking ninety-five percent. Ninety-five percent has not. And I thought has has not not. has never flown. And I thought that was high because um, you mentioned India, Muslim worlds, uh, sure, where they huge populations. They they travel a lot. But uh, I I guess if if one is to learn, that is that it's it's uh, people who 
who travel all the time, the same people right, who same travel people all the time. Right, same people doing it all the time, yeah. And, and like you mentioned, you meant people who never travel? Well, they probably never will go on an airplane. You're right. Yep. Yeah. Some people are deathly afraid of it. Some people just uh, would rather take the, the scenic approach and, and yeah. drive it, which is fine. But people being afraid of flying, I never quite understood. But I mean, then you also, you also have people that don't have a reason to fly. That's true. I mean, they're that's just, true. they live near all of their family and they don't. I think a lot of times we forget how good, how well off a lot of the world isn't. Right. You yes. know, and the, yeah. the availability project isn't, isn't even there. Isn't yeah. an option to even try it. Yeah. Yep. Monetarily. Oh, know. yeah. Yeah. Wow. So how, another, another good one. How long do we think? That, so the longest flight currently is from New, Newark to Singapore. How many hours do we think that is? <laughs> Ooh, I read something about this. I bet I you it's over 30. It's, no, no, no. It can't be. <laughs> no. I think it's 18. I think it's like 18 hours. I, you got it. Is it 18 hours? It's 18 yeah. hours. I thought flying yeah. to like Austra to Australia or something was 22. Well, yeah, but see, you don't do that in one shot. No. You like go to LA. Oh, you're saying and straight through. He's straight oh, through yeah. from Newark to Singapore. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's nonstop in the air for 18 hours. From here to... I don't know how they do that with fuel. That's, it. that's crazy. Well, they take I a mean, lot of fuel. Because, <laughs> yeah, they used to do like, you know, they'd go into Anchorage. Yeah. Go through Anchorage yeah. and refuel in Anchorage. And well, a lot of the jets, the, the, the modern jets these days, they're very fuel efficient, uh -huh. uh, which means guys in my profession, I, I got to start thinking for something else um, instead of selling fuel in the future. <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably not in my. <laughs> I know what the, the trip from uh, here to Buenos Aires, that was uh, 14 and a half in the air. The okay. whole the whole way, which seemed like forever, oh, seemed yeah. like forever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, that was that was crazy amount of time. But eighteen hours, yeah. I there's not enough room to run around. I need a gym on the uh, yeah. on the plane. Yeah, we need it. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, you gotta you gotta be able to move. Cause yeah, no no joke. No blood clot thing. Oh, and, it's yeah. a real deal, man. Yep. And here it's just a funny thing. Here, the, the last one is uh, one item that is forbidden to use, but it's still per regulations installed on each aircraft. It's forbidden to use, but it's still forbidden installed. to use, but FAA insists they have to install it. Oh, I wonder if it's like an ashtray. Is it something in the cockpit? It's not in the cockpit. It's just in the plane somewhere. Mm -hmm. It's an ashtray in the restroom. It is. Is it really? Oh, oh whoa, it. Bill. It is, wow. Yes. I, I was flying over the summer and I saw <laughs> one in there. And I'm like, why are they still putting this in here? That's bizarre. So, so I read about it, and, and, I, and I always thought, this is odd. Why right. in new airplanes, why do they put it in? It is because they say somebody is, about, is bound to break the law. So we'd rather they do it in there where if something do happen, they can control it. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of horrible, but, but, but yeah, that's uh, the, I mean, they got Some it. people will go out on it. You're and, right. And Somebody get will. Corner. Yep. Well, and I mean, you're almost in encouraging you them are, to do wrong are, yeah. by doing that i just yeah. like you know what go ahead and if you do it's okay no 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 they still give the big speech about oh. the smoke detectors and if you do yeah. that oh yeah and uh yeah yeah the whole the whole vaping wow. thing now is a yeah that yeah. is that too yeah. craziness yeah craziness karsten thank you so much for being here with us thank you gentlemen it was really a pleasure appreciate you. and thank you again for your support for ears and all you and uh, Wendy do for us. We really, really appreciate you guys. And yeah, uh, if you ever fly into Tyco Airport, you guys know where you're going, right? Space right. Coast Executive, Executive Jet Center. It's as easy as that. Come see us. Bill, anything interesting going on over the next uh, week? I guess I'll see you Friday. Yeah, that's right. We got the big, the big football game. Astronaut the and The big uh, rivalry THS, yeah. game, yeah. The yeah, Coco cool. game was interesting. Oh, yeah. I was not here for that. I did watch part of it. Uh, streamed with from um, our friends there at Steven, Space Coast Daily. Yeah, Stephen Orville. Yeah, yeah, yeah they. they uh, so I watched part of it. Tell you what, that was uh, an interesting game for so many perspectives. One, that was the first kick I've ever seen our kicker, uh, Dean Roberts, miss ever right. in two years. I've never seen the kid miss a kick. Right. And that mean he missed a kick that game, which is which I think was blocked more than it was him missing it. Okay. Um, so it should have been seven to six at halftime. And then there were a couple of uh, hits there that they oh, were yeah. penalized for. I mean, one of them were the kid was unconscious for a while. Oh, yeah. It was yeah. very, it was very yeah, scary head stuff. Head-to-head thing, yeah. Yeah, and I was shocked that nobody got, ex nobody nobody got, got ejected out of the from game. it. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, I mean, it happened back to back and nobody got ejected. Right. And those, you know, but, that's, you know what that's I was just, uh, to what me, I that was, was very interesting. What I was happy about is that the boys hung in there. Oh, they did. They that was did. A, they hung in there. And last year they got blown away and it was a running clock. This year we hung in there. Next year we could take them. Yeah. I would have liked to have seen that maybe handled a little bit differently. But again, I'm not the person on the field calling it. So, of right. course, that's, that's different. Sure. But yes, uh, this tightest full football team that uh, John Holmes has put together. Oh, yeah. And coaching is different. It's different yeah. uh, than anything this school's had in a very long time. Watching them play every week since he's been coaching has been a, it's been a pleasure because they, mm -hmm. are, they are in every game. Uh, they're in every oh, game. Yeah. They're playing yeah. hard no matter what's going on. It's, uh, and they don't, they it's don't nice. quit. Right. They it, don't quit. It doesn't matter what's happening. They're playing hard, and they're playing, they're playing clean, good, sound football nonstop. Yep. It's, a, it's a beautiful thing to watch, but I digress. Indeed you do. <laughs> digress. All right. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. We appreciate you all a lot. Uh, you can find the Ears podcast on all platforms by searching Ears. Ears. It's uh, E-E-A-R-S-S. -S. If you are not busy on January the 19th, we will be in Cocoa Village with the Ears to the Environment EcoFest. It's an all-day event from 9 to 4 inside with presentations from everybody from Dwayne DeFries, who we have on here in a couple of weeks, to uh, the Florida Wildlife Hospital, Brevard Zoo, you name them, they're all there. And then we're taking an hour break, and it'll be live music outside from 5 to 11. Free event. Come enjoy it. Hope to see you there. Thank you all for tuning in. Catch you all next time. Bye-bye.